The government's revised travel plans brought joy for many, a little bit of confusion uh, as well. <laughs> uh, many holiday companies are reporting the whopping 200% increase in bookings. But with half-term looming, confusion is still rife among many potential holiday makers. So is a break abroad possible and where can you go? Well, Simon uh, Calder joins us now, our travel expert. So, travel rules, half-term, everyone's got their eyes on the prize. What's changed? OK, well... It is just a little bit confusing, which is why it's always really good to have a proper travelling agent involved, because in October alone, there will be three different sets of testing rules um, for England alone. We still don't know what Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland are going to do, but here's the basic plan. At the moment, as you know, if you're going to a, a, a foreign country, which is lovely, and you've got to check, of course, first whether they're going to let you in, then when you come back, you've got to have a test before you get on a plane to the UK. You've also got to book in advance a test, a PCR test on day two, although you can take it earlier after you get back. And you then have to fill in the passenger locator form. So... That sounds what it is now, isn't it? Uh, that's exactly what it is now. Yeah. But different bits are going to fall off at different times. OK. OK. So from the 4th of October, anybody who's fully vaccinated and anybody who's under 18 and lives in Britain will be able to come back in without having to do the test to fly. So that's going to save you quite a lot of hassle when yeah. you're on holiday and also about 20, 30 quid. Then at the end of October, but we don't know when it will be, we hope it will be in time for half term, that day two PCR test is going to be replaced by a lateral flow test. Mm -hmm. You're still going to have to go through all the palaver of um, uh, booking it in advance and paying for it and filling in your passenger locator form, but it is going to be uh, cheaper. So you might save 20, 30 quid per person in your party, which is certainly worth having. And you can't just use your NHS ones, the ones that Ooh, come to you, you no. just register that and that's done. Has to be, or you pay for it, do it online with someone. Yeah, the, uh, you cannot, in general, use um, NHS tests for any international travel. You can use them between Scotland, mainland and islands, where you ask to do so, and also to and from um, Northern Ireland. Again, yeah. the Northern Ireland executive would like you to do that, but otherwise you are paying for it. Right, got so it. So what about countries that... that won't let us in because that, as you say, you, you, you can book your holiday all well and good and you can leave the country, but you can't be absolutely sure that you're going to be allowed in the other end. Well, you have to check in advance. I mean, with respect, Philip, you won't even be allowed on the plane to get to that destination unless you are entitled to be there. Well, you shouldn't be anyway. And, and you've got to check the regulations. Now, actually, for most of our favourite countries, um, it's quite straightforward. Spain, for example, being fully vaccinated, then that, that is going to be OK. It's a little bit tricky with unvaccinated youngsters. Um, Portugal still wants a test. I think they'll do away with that. And Greece basically just says, yeah, vaccinated, in you come. Mm. Um, and some other countries are saying, yeah, we're, we're Croatia, we don't care if you're vaccinated or not. But the crucial thing is, if you're unvaccinated, you might be thinking, Croatia, on the green list, I can come back in and I don't need to quarantine. That is going to change from the 4th of October too. So... In Life what gets. Way? It, 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 you're going to be told, OK, if you're unvaccinated, there's no more green list. All those countries have been put onto the amber list and therefore you have to uh, take a test to fly. You need to have a day two PCR test and a day eight PCR test. And by the way, you're going to be self-isolating at home for 10 days unless you get a day five test and then you'll be able to release if that one's negative. I don't wow. make up the rules, I just report them. And so what about those countries, you know, like Australia and the, yeah, America, where we're not allowed to go? Are they going to lift that? Or well, is that... OK, let's have a look. Front page of The Telegraph today, they say that Boris Johnson is going to the White House, he's going to say to Joe Biden, he's going to make an impassioned plea to let us in. Bear in mind, for the last 18 months, a series of presidential proclamations started by Donald Trump means that anybody from the UK cannot go to the US unless they're an American citizen mm. or they have the right of residence there. So this is desperately upsetting for lots of people with family connections. Also pretty upsetting for people like me who like Florida theme parks and Vegas and New York and California fly drives. Um, and the thing is, the Americans can kind of get away without us. They've got a huge tourism industry and loads of people in Wyoming or Ohio will always be delighted to go to Florida or New York or Vegas or, or yeah. California. So there's not that urgency. 
Um, but with a bit of luck, Americans can come in here now if they've been fully vaccinated. Um, we will get some movement, but uh, it's just been too, too long. And this is not the first time that a, a European leader has um, uh, gone to the president and said, let us in. No, I mean, the Europeans have been on it for ages. I mean, it, it, take Angela Merkel. One of her last acts as chancellor was to say, oh, come on, Joe, let, let us in. Have you seen our vaccination rates? They're much better than the British. Um, but no, the European Union is, is completely off limits uh, to the US as well. And so you've got this mad situation where some Brits are going to Mexico, which is on our red list, spending two weeks there so that you can then go to America and say, I haven't been in the UK for two weeks, you've got to let me in. What about if you're a vaccinated family travelling with ch unvaccinated children? Yes, there was a lot of fuss about this yesterday. The big newspaper report saying unvaccinated children would have to quarantine. That's not the case. If you are living in the UK and you come back into the UK and you're under 18, then you are treated as though you are fully vaccinated. Fine. There are deals to be had, some good ones as well. Yes, there certainly Oh, are. nice. We haven't done a holiday deal for ages, well, have I we? Know. OK, okay. so good. The, the other part of the big announcement on Friday was that eight countries have come off the um, red list, including Turkey, which has been there all summer long. So if you want a cheeky break um, to the lovely results of Sea Day, going on the 12th of October from Manchester with EasyJet holidays, that is going to take you to cost you £275. Mm. This includes flights and soft catering accommodation. But, of course, the big one for lots of families is half term. So I can do... Uh, and the prices obviously kind of go up by the minute as you're yeah. looking. But I've checked all of these in the past um, uh, 10 minutes and uh, with Tui going to beautiful Benidorm for a family of four, self-catering, uh, including your flights uh, from Newcastle on the 23rd of October and your baggage and your transfers and your accommodation. That's going to be £432 per person. But actually, following day, going... Uh, from Malta. from Birmingham to Malta, mm -hmm. that is going to be even better. That's um, uh, with uh, Jet 2, and you're going to fly out to lovely Malta. Uh, 200... And, well, it was 280... 381. 381 pounds. No, it's actually come down. Has Two it? pounds. 379. I've just checked it. Okay. Uh, and that's a week over half term. I expect that price to go through the roof really quite quickly. Yeah. But yeah. Malta, a lovely place to go. Really southern Mediterranean, nearly in Africa. So, so worth going there. Well, I mean, Egypt's always a good option for winter sun, but uh, there aren't any flights at the moment. Well, OK, Egypt has left the um, red list Two and just the other uh, other countries very quickly: Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Oman, the Maldives, and Kenya. Is that eight altogether? Anyway, the great news is Egypt is off the list, and I'm expecting all kinds of great deals. Whether you're going to Sharm El Sheikh uh, to her garden on the Red Sea for mm. that wonderful sunshine, or indeed going to Cairo to see the new Grand Egyptian Museum, which is finally going to open. Um, no, nothing I've seen this morning in terms of people laying on new flights, but you can absolutely guarantee it's going to be really it's popular this winter. I can't wait to get there. Thank Thanks. you.